Yam Time is brought to you by Sany Media. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Yam Time Episode 2. As always, you're here with your host, the big hoopty, Insaney, and Dub Nation's finest, Mr. <laughs> ZZ Huncho. Um, we're back. It's, it's a Monday night after the interesting All-Star Weekend, to say the least. We have a lot to say about it. Um, but before we do any of that, two things very quickly. Um, first off, I want to publicly apologize because in episode one of Yam Time, I broke the first rule of podcasting which is don't eat while you talk. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, I had a bag of mixed, uh, a stop and shop brand mixed nuts. Um, and I was caught, la- I was caught lacking, not just by these guys acting like children, but also because there was something I had to say, but my mouth was full and I got it to get, I had to get my point off. So I spoke. And I sounded like an idiot because my mouth was full <laughs> of stop and shop nuts. Hey, that wasn't even and a this, podcast. No, though. hold up, hold up. It was bad enough because obviously for our Spotify viewers, they're going to be like, like they can't see yeah. the uh, the bag right. I have in my hand. So it's like, what is this guy on? I just sounded like a moron. But it was it was bad enough that way. Saney clipped it <laughs> and put it in a clip. I didn't and it even was notice. Like, I didn't really? even notice. I'll be real. I, if you're bringing that up, I gotta look back on the clip. I did not oh, dang. notice. That it was I at the end it. of. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we did a. We we gave Spencer Dinwiddie a highlight on our first episode, and Bro, it was at the end of that one. When I, was be, off I apologize. Comment. I generally did not. I, I I did not see that. It's all good. <laughs> uh, I probably shouldn't have brought it up then, if no one noticed. <laughs> um, I just want to say, won't happen again. Rookie uh, mistake. That, I, well, was, I leave that in episode one. I'll say, I, I, I think so. I think G Money, shout out G Money, he brought it up. He was like, I can't believe Hoop had nuts in his mouth. Uh, <laughs> he said bad. I didn't podcast. know it was in a clip. I didn't even know it was a clip. But I'll say this to your to your to your uh, defense. It, that episode one was while it was a podcast episode. Obviously, that was just us coming back, re re you know reignited. Had to the knock flame. the rust off. You feel? You me? know, yeah. Like, and, and we were just having a good time. So and it no was as nuts. if you're sitting with the boys. It's like you're sitting. It's like the, the show is like you're sitting with the boys. But in terms of what we have for this episode, I think. Hey, can I? Sorry, can I get one more thing off? Oh no worries. Yeah, yeah. I I I put this jersey on because in, in honor of All Star Weekend, mm. um, for those who are not uh, can't see the YouTube, it's it's a red one from 2022. I wanted to give you guys a guess each to guess who I'm repping right now. You can't see the number. It's just the NBA logo and the 2022 All Star jersey format. So, uh, who who do you who do you think I'm repping right now? Julius, no wait, was he in Australia, 2020? That's your guess. Move on. No, no, no. That's not my guess. <laughs> your guess. My guess is um, Kemba Walker. I'll, I'll give you a hint, Z. He was a starter. Dude, you said 2022. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said 2020. 2022. Uh-huh. Okay, no, I'm not You're saying Kemba Walker. Nobody, nobody say I'm a casual because I did not know that it was 2022. <laughs> that's, that's cool. Your guess is Kemba Walker. Move on. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, is it okay? Can you give me the West or the East? No. 2022 All Star starter. It's look at the jersey it's, color. It's red. It's red. Oh, it's red. All right. Um, <laughs> is it the West or the East? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my bad. My bad. Right. Uh, <laughs> Ju- That'd be a valid question if you couldn't see me, but no. so, yeah, yeah. Julius Randle. No. He wasn't a starter. starter. Wait. Yeah, no. All star <laughs> starter, NBA legend, A Wiggle, Andrew Wiggins. Oh, okay. You know what? That actually makes sense. He started like... an all star game and it was so egregious. I was like, I got to get a jersey. Yeah. And I happened to have a uh, connection to Jersey for us and they hooked me up. So shout out I... to Jersey for us. I did not buy this with my own, with my own money. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but shout out to Andrew Wiggins. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. I, I completely forgot he was an all star. Exactly. Be honest, that's why, I forgot that's why Julius I Randall didn't start. Has he ever started an All Star game? Who? No, he's been in three of them though. I know he has. See, don't I defend Andrew has. Wiggins' eighteen points per game All Star starter <laughs> in this day and age. Don't you I'm dare! Defending, we're not even I'm starting that. We're not second starting and that. Finals we're, MVP. We're, we're, second and Finals MVP. Luca came team. off the bench for reference. Yeah, hey. Luca should have been. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Well, that's that's to be fair, to be fair, I'm gonna I'm gonna rep this in like a grocery store in ten years. And in Canada, like too. The hardest in Canada. In Watch what happens. <laughs> You'll get love. Anyway, uh, for this episode, we got a good one for you. Um, we're going to go over All-Star Weekend. And more specifically, it's two segments. You, you guys can take a wild guess before you listen to this full episode. What segment's going to be longer? We're going to go over our pros and then our cons 
of the All-Star Weekend, okay? Let's start with the pros. Let's start a little light. I'll go first. I have two, technically three pros from the All-Star Weekend. Um, Steph versus Sabrina was dope. Uh, you know, I, 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 round of applause to the NBA for cooking that up. Sabrina, 26, you know, the, the same score as Dame got, and he won the freaking contest. Um, <laughs> and Damian Lillard hitting two half court pull up jumpers in the All Star game. Those were the two times where I was like, oh. that's all I have to say. Uh, I got maybe one more. Um, yeah. I really enjoyed the alt cast. With Charles Barkley and Draymond oh, yeah, Green. Yeah, yeah. Oh yes, yes, yeah, yeah, that was good. Um, I was not listening to Reggie Miller and Brian Anderson commentate an uh, unserious All Star game. I can't even imagine how that went. You know why? Like, I what are they talking like, about? You know why the one thing that, that bugged me about that that though, what you said? Why is Draymond? You know, reporting He's for All Star. He's entertaining, and it's entertainment, and I and I love it. I'm not. That's all on I him. care about. I'm game. not hating on him, but if you listen to it the whole time, he's just glazed. He's like Steph's winning All Star MVP, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't see why we can't go back to the finals. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's just yeah. on national TV making a case for the Warriors. When I don't know, I don't know. I, I I don't think it should. And I'm not hating. I love Draymond. Draymond's hilarious. I just think it's weird how we allow current players um, mm. to be announcers. But you gotta uh, also look at it from like. Like, I think about that, too, and I think to myself, who who's some of the worst, like, players that were playing currently that decided to hop on? The, you uh, remember Pat Bev on ESPN? Okay, Pat Bev on ESPN was, about the, was like, hey, a, like some look, look at the numbers. Club Shay Shay type shit. Like, it was like, he, bro, was, bro, I think he called out CP on national television or just click, call, calling him a cone on defense or something like that. Yeah, and you, you remember, he's, he's like, look at the numbers. When, when I'm guarding you, it feels like Giannis is guarding you. <laughs> Yeah, but it was just like please make it a TVP like case it. At, on mo- Monday mornings at nine. Like, what the hell? <laughs> That's why I don't like it. Like, I, I sound like a complete hater. And the more I talk to him, I realize, like, you know what? This does sound like me hating. But everybody hates on something, and everybody's a hater to something. So whatever, right? I'm a hater when it comes to this. But yet, like, I don't, I don't know. I just don't, I don't get it. Like, as like, imagine you're like hypothetically like Pat Bev's teammate or whatever, right? And the first thing you do after you get bounced off the playoff, bounced out of the playoffs is go commentate on the teams that beat you, you know, because you want to have that broadcasting career when your career is suddenly done. And fair enough. I mean, if that's your passion, that's your passion. I just think that, you know, while you're a player, um, it's just, I don't know. I, I, again, I, I, I don't have a set reason why. It just kind of rubs me the wrong way. I don't like it. I don't like, I, I didn't like, 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 who do you think Draymond's going to say when we ask who his all-star MVP is going to be? You know, who, who do you think? You know, I'm not surprised by this. I'm not like looking at it like, well, I wonder what he's going to say this time. You know, of course he was going to say Steph Curry like that. Like, and it's just stuff like that where it's like, you're allowing somebody to come in and it's, it, there's clearly going to be a bias standpoint. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like, I don't know. That's just me. That's just me. I don't know if you guys saw the, uh, the clip of the, alt cast first off i hated the fact that they had i guess i should save this for the cons but they had their faces showing on screen mm. so the game was smaller oh yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, it yeah. took a- it was like so aggravating but draymond um, found his way back in the all-star game i don't know how talk to me he said charles barkley was messing with uh i think it was tyrese halliburton for his like super expensive yet just unfashionable oh, yeah, yeah. fits and he's like why why are these guys walking around with thirty thousand dollar bags for some nasty gym shoes <laughs> and draymond's like how much that suit you got on he's like a thousand dollars he's like yeah look like it and then barkley goes in retaliation he's like he's like hey draymond guess who was asking about you the other day he goes who no. he said no one <laughs> No, the funniest part was when Charles was like, oh, at the end of it, he's like, he's like, all right, Draymond, good luck in the play in. And then Draymond's like, now why would you not, not take one of my rings? I was like, yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> Bro, it was, that was the best. That was like one of the pros was definitely Draymond and Chuck. I want to see that, like, when Draymond retires. When he retires. Next to Chuck. Mm-hmm. I want to see it when he retires. You yeah. know, I would have, I would have. Again, Draymond's really funny, so I'm kind of hating. Like again, like I'm, I, have, I will be full aware of the fact that I'm hating right now. Maybe I just didn't like how Draymond didn't say Shea should have won MVP. Maybe it killed me, kill me. You know, maybe I wanted him to say somebody other than Steph, but I don't know. Um, that's that's the pro segment wrapped up, right? And the pro segment had a con to one of the pros. Uh, they took up too much of the screen. You know, <laughs> I should have saved that to make the list more yeah. extensive. <laughs> yeah. um, 
But let's go to the cons, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna start this. I know Hoop has a I, whole report. I feel ready. like I should go last. Hoop wants right, to go man, last. Let me, let me, let me go. Z, let me go. I'll let you take the stage. So, here's so. Wait, 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 I think that we should right? bounce oh, one, 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 one. Okay. All right. Well, all right. so I, I have like, like bullet points on bullet points. So if you want. Okay. Like I can just run through them, but I want you guys to get your stuff off. But so then, if I repeat it, it doesn't sound like I'm stealing your stuff. Z, let's go back and forth, and then we'll get Hoop's final extensive list. All right, it's gonna be right. like a monologue of sorts. Okay, so all right, we'll, we'll go through. <laughs> get your stuff like, off. It'll be like an end credit scene. I'll, I'll edit it, so it's just like eh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Hoop, you, Z, you go first. All right, con number one. The first of all, let me just preface by saying. Uh, I was at work earlier and I was trying to figure out like how to prep for this show besides having to watch that egregious shit this week, last weekend, but whatever. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, let me go back in time to last year when we were doing our former show, the French one. And we had given our all-star predictions or not predictions, our all-star uh, analysis after last year's game. Right. I think that was the one Tatum at 55, if I'm not mistaken. And and Dom Mitchell, his teammate, had 40, and we were sitting there saying, dude, this is terrible, right? Compare that to this year. We're saying the same damn thing. I didn't start watching the All-Star game until the 640 mark in the fourth quarter. Last se- last year when we did this, when we had the show and we were talking about it, Saney came on here and said, I'm going to be honest, guys, I didn't watch the All-Star game. No, I and didn't. I had no intention to. And I was like, you know what? Fair. Literally fair. I see no. what you mean, Saini, but, but go I, ahead. Get, get your results. And, right, and, and I'll be honest, the only reason I watched it yesterday was because I knew last year maybe I was, you know, a little crazy for doing a podcast episode on an All-Star Weekend I didn't watch. Um, <laughs> but I was happy I didn't watch it because 2023 at the time was the least memorable All-Star Weekend by far. So I, I did not care. Um, here's my first con. And I really, and I'm going to really de- dig deep in my bag because I want to get some stuff that Hoop won't even have written down. What the hell was Mac McClung talking about before the dunk contest saying he has two dunks never been seen before and three of them never been done <laughs> yeah, in the contest? That is a good one. Um, what, w- w- bro did the same dunk three times. <laughs> you know, yo, guys, watch, watch me dunk over Shaq. I, watch me dunk over Shaq, guys. I, <laughs> yo, go, 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 <laughs> Y'all ain't go, seen go, this one. Go, go, hey, bring go, him out. Bring him out. Every, <laughs> you, know, you know what's really, really grinds my gears? Every single dunk contest, somebody goes and gets Shaq from the crowd. When are we going to stop that? Congratulations. You dunked over Shaq, who dipped his head down a little. So he's realistically like 6'7", 6'8". You know, I don't, I don't know how big his head is. But, you know, like, let's say he's cutting off, like, however. Again, I don't know. But like he's he's not six, seven foot. You're not jumping over a seven foot guy. He's ducked his head. And I don't know if you saw the video, but... um. Was it was it Jamie or Jacob Toppin, Jamie or Mac? I don't know. One of them. Jamie Jake- dunked over him. <laughs> yeah, and it, his balls hit Shaq's head. You could see Shaq's glasses fall out of his face <laughs> in the replay. You know, like he wasn't even. He didn't even jump over him. He had his hand <laughs> on his back and everything. You know what I mean? Like it was not that. Like I, by all means, I could not do it. You could, you might be able to catch me. Uh, jumping over a toddler on a seven foot rim. So I'm not here to say you you suck at dunking, but. I think that we need to face the reality that the dunk contest is just never going to be the same. We've seen everything at this point. Um, the vibe is just terrible, and I would rather them replace it, obviously, at this point. It, it's getting – I mean, I have a lot of other cons specifically related to mm-hmm. the dunk contest. Z, you go again. In, uh, in, in response to you, I agree with your point. I will say, though, the throw-it-to-himself dunk – That was had- crazy. Had that been done on yeah, the first yeah. try, I thought that would have yeah. been straight 50s. I still yeah. think it was at least a 49. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. Yeah, the fact they were Jalen crack. Brown's done. Oh, my God. We, we will get we will Oh, get my that. God, yeah. We will yes. get to He's that. damn yeah. right. He's damn right we will get into that. <laughs> because my next con, Jalen Brown. Can we talk about him, bro? Listen, listen, listen. Listen, the funniest thing that I've seen all day today was Shannon Sharp this morning when he said, he said, Mac McClung dunked over Shaq. Uh, uh, Aaron Gordon dunked over. Who did Aaron Gordon dunk over in, in his uh in his dunk contest? He dunked over someone. Taco. 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 He said Aaron Gordon dunked over Taco. Jalen Brown dunked over Casanet. What am I supposed to do with that? Exactly, bro. You not only that, but this man was sitting in a chair. Like, what, what are we doing right now, Jalen Brown? You of all people said some heinous things over the weekend. One of which. I don't even think it was really heinous. 
you just said that that you know you one of the best like poster dunkers like you know either currently or of all time i think of all time whatever but for the dunk contest something that i'm not gonna lie when i saw jalen brown's name on there i was like oh all right well maybe mac isn't a guarantee you know and then jalen brown goes out there and does something that i would see on tuesday nights at 8 30 p.m eastern time. like what what are you doing bro what is it, happening right now to, to follow up on that point z before i give my next con um Number <laughs> number one, when he jumped over Kai, he tried to do the D Brown and yes. did it after he dunked and landed. So he <laughs> dunked the ball and then went, and he dabs. And I I remember sitting there, I was like, did he just try to do the D Brown and just dunk the ball normally and then do it as like what you think they don't have instant replay? You think the judge is just gonna see you on the ground like this? That's so like the no look pass it? when they don't look yeah. afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I was so confused when he did that. And, bro, and, and Z, again, like, I, the second I saw Jalen Brown was doing it, my first thought was Jalen Brown is a strong dunker. He's not mm-hmm. a acrobatic, like, wow dunker. <laughs> like, he will – like, you can even hear in his dunks. Like, he's destroying the rim. And I'd love to see that, again, 8.30 p.m. at EST. But he's not doing it in a fancy throw the ball to himself. You know, he's just – and he's like putting on a Michael Jackson glove on his left hand. Like I'm supposed to acknowledge the fact that oh, I, have, I have a left hand. Um, <laughs> anyway. You can't go left. You can't. You still can't go left. What are, what are we on? Our, are we on our fourth con now? My fourth Third, con. I think. Third. Whatever. Carl Anthony Towns. Who? <laughs> why did Finch? Oh, don't ever put Finch as the con. Oh, Finch is another con. I'll leave him. I'll leave it that uh, to another con. <laughs> Who gave Carl Anthony Towns a green light? Because all that guy did was lay the ball up. Or, or do a reverse lay, might might give you a little bit of a cock back, hang from the rim, you're seven foot, I'm not impressed, Dunk. And I think, I don't know who told him he could shoot the ball from three, because I saw him shot Chuck like 18 deep threes thinking he was Dame, and he made as many as I would. And I, 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 I've I never been more irritated watching, genuinely, genuinely, I, 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 everything I love, I've never been more irritated watching a 50-point game in my life than Carl Anthony Towns' 50-point game. I've never been more agitated watching. Every time he touched the ball, I promise you, I kid you not, no exaggeration, I, I groan. Oh, oh, no. Every time he touched the ball, no. <laughs> what? I started begging. I was begging. No, no. Pass. Yeah, you save that. Pass. <laughs> like, oh, my God. And I, and I don't want to be a hater on Carl Anthony Towns, but this is the all-star game, not a layup line. This is not a layup line, bro. He, How many shots did he shoot coming off the – Finch. Finch, was he not voted in as a reserve? Why is he getting starter minutes? He shot the he shot the most shots out of anyone else on the team. How many was it? How many was it? 30. 30. 30, 30. Bro, bro, Meow. he shot his what what, what number is Kyle Latini Towns? Uh like jersey. 32? Was? 30. Yeah, he yeah. shot more than his jersey. <laughs> he had more shots than his jersey, bro. And I know I Finch did it, but bro, Finch left him in the game because because I guarantee you because it's his it's his player. He wants him to oh, let's go break Jason Tatum's record. He didn't even do it because he only shot like forty percent from the what was he like tw- what was it twenty for thirty four? He was twenty three at thirty five, so sixty six percent from the field. But he but, was four of thirteen from the three. Yeah, like they were. Those are all layups, bro. I don't care. I'm, I'm not counting. And they your layup were. Percentage. The majority were. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. not counting yeah. your layup percentage in an All Star game. Okay. But that's that's a Carl Anthony Towns is a con himself, <laughs> and I I love the guy. I'm not hating, but uh, I am hating. I take it back. That was disgusting. That was disgusting. Um, hope you wanna you wanna chime in or or what? Because one of my my last con was just that Doc Rivers was the first coach to have yeah. a yeah. team. Yeah, we, we, we get, you, you can harp Bro, on that real quick. He had no shame walking out in that introduction. <laughs> Doc trying to hide behind that. What, what is he? Three and seven with the Bucks. Hey, he won a ring he fifteen has years same, ago. He has he the <laughs> he has the same record. By the way, the Milwaukee Bucks have the same record as the Detroit Pistons in their last ten. Oh, oh, yeah. I did read no, that. that's that's Four that's minutes. a that's a that's a cherry pick stat. I didn't know Pistons like stat three seven. Bumps. No, yeah. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm yeah, I don't care. You're the, the you are the Milwaukee Bucks doing the same as the all worst right, team in NBA right. history in ten games. That's a great sample size. I'm not saying they're as bad as the Pistons, but they're they're looking like first round exits put, to me. Put some respect on Kevin Knox, please. <laughs> I, I can't even say that with a straight face. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Bucks are looking bad, but let's go back to the All Star. Hoop, you you're good, bro. 
I think am I, run, I'm, am I running off now? Babyface did the did the national anthem, didn't he? That was that was nice. Yeah, that's a pro. That's a pro. That's a that's actually a pro. I should have said that. Yeah, um, much better than Fergie. Yeah. Um, all right. So I I have this in three categories. I have general. Then I have Saturday <laughs> night, and then I have oh bro. I'm sorry four four categories: general, Saturday night, then specifically the dunk contest. Aside from Saturday night, and then there is the All Star game. The um, fact that he has a table of contents. Literally. Yeah. Hey, feel free to chime in at any point here. Yeah. Uh, I'm expecting to have many different breaks in this. Right. Or if you want to let me run through and then we do it at the end, whatever you're feeling. Uh, starting with general. I like the no one by one idea. Yeah. No one cares about the celebrity game. Change it to a media media basketball challenge, whether it's Skip Bayless and Stephen A. Smith playing knockout or a former player's game. No one cares about the celebrity game. I agree. I agree. And the fact that the one guy I cared about, Kai, touched the ball once. I would have loved to see Kai. Like that would have been funny. Like, oh, he's streaming the game, blah, blah. and then Micah Parsons was. It, is that his name? The NFL player, yeah, bro. You Micah already in the NFL. Why, why? Why are you taking over the game here? Like they he's literally like six six two fifty. Is like, what's like, the point? Of this? Like, that, I don't know. I don't know. I, again, I, like I hate to be that guy. I, I mean, Micah Parsons. I'm sure he's a great guy, but let's be real. Like ninety percent of the viewers were there for Kai. If we're being honest, it's all just like 13-year-olds watching his stream. Yeah, yeah, I didn't care about the celebrity game. I could care less. But I'm just saying uh, Micah ruined that game for a lot of people who tuned in. Because <laughs> uh, they really hyped up. Like that whole marketing strategy with the celebrity game was hyping up Kai. Yeah. So, um, All right. Then the next one um, is very important to me. Player introductions throughout the weekend are too extra and take half the time if you call them off the bench. Like you usually would with the spotlight. And mm-hmm. it's like, here, number 22, whoever. And they walk out and they get high fives and they do cool handshakes. Instead, this is what they, this takes at least like a half hour of screen time throughout the entire weekend before every event. This is what they do. Hold up. I'm, I'm going to act it out. Like, this okay. is how the players act when they get the name called. Apologies to Spotify people. Yeah. If you're on YouTube, though, you're about to get a show for a show. Is that is that Derrick Rose All Star Game 2012 right there? Is that what I'm that, saying? That's every introduction. Hey, who? <laughs> I have who, to sit and watch that for a half missed, an hour. You, you you know what? You missed one original thing though. You you missed Jokic's. Jokic does this. <laughs> <laughs> he waves both arms. But yeah, but no, like it's before so every contest. Hey, yeah, you, you gotta yeah. get that. You gotta get the hands behind the back, and they realize they're done waving their hands, yeah, and then they yeah. move on to the next player. <laughs> like they just. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, okay. and the little I, lip, and the little lip, lip lick or to the like, <laughs> <laughs> and then you got LeBron doing this. Yeah, 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 <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> and, and at the, at one point, like the crowd just gets sick and tired of cheering. Yeah, like it's just. It's just <laughs> oh, God, I'd, I'd make Scotty a lot Barnes. of changes. <laughs> the homie, what, that the homie? what are we doing? Like, All right, next. Group, this on, is bro. still this is still in general. Um, I hated the LED court. It throws off the whole vibe in the arena visually, um, and almost everything it was used for was unnecessary. It didn't even help with the skills challenge because no one followed the arrows. And don't nobody give a hold on before you continue. Don't nobody give a damn about no damn Kia Soul. Don't nobody give a damn about no new Kia, bro. What are we, Adam? Stop playing with us, bro. You you got you over here doing these LED lights and got the court going from from uh, left to right, all, so us so all so we can see a Kia in the middle of the court. What are we doing? The one thing Which the, family needs a Kia. The one thing that the LED court is cool for was the shot clock on the ground during the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Other Fair. than that, it. it was useless. Like you, you get in the oh, contest. we have another pro. We have another oh, pro. Oh, 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 shot clock on the ground. Shot clock on the ground. <laughs> you guys, the funniest part was in the dunk contest when it would have like that red flame following I'm their getting feet. Getting there, yeah. but, but then it just didn't follow them during the dunk. It only followed them up to the top of the key, and then the and LEDs... if they, bro, if they stood in place, it would like get into like a bunch. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and it was like three seconds delayed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, next one. The arena was way too big. They didn't do it in the actual indie basketball arena. It was in Lucas Oil, which is, I believe is the Colts uh, stadium. And it felt poorly lit the entire time. Uh, there was no crowd energy the whole night. It just felt bland. Um, it was physically painful to listen to Ali, La- Ali LaForce before and after each event. I think they should have put Ernie Johnson out there as the full-time interviewer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so sorry, Ali. Damn. <laughs> I mean, Ernie is the voice of the people. Let's be Damn. 
Hakan is Ali Force. <laughs> Ali, Ali, love force. May oh, the love force be with you. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you're giving her, you're giving her that, uh, that, that two K, you know, skipping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now we go to David Aldridge. Yeah. Well, hi. <laughs> uh, all right. Now we're on to Saturday night. The skills challenge obstacle course was boring. Would be much better with two teams going head to head at the same time, which they've done before. I don't know why they took it out. Uh, the passing challenge to me is boring to watch on TV since you have no idea what to look at. There's too much going on. You can't keep up with the scores. Uh, you could barely tell if it goes through the net. Yeah. Three people yeah. running around at once. I just don't like it. Um, the shooting portion of the skills challenge isn't awful, but no one uses any other spots but the three-pointers. Um, and I think it should be changed to either lightning or knockout style. Uh, once again, being head-to-head. -head. Uh, I don't know what's so difficult about that. I just, especially the passing, it's just so boring to watch, in my opinion. Um, next up, three point contest was very cool, uh, but with the amount of star power you had, it's gonna sound like a diss. But why invite Malik Beasley, uh, with the other dudes <laughs> you got there? If we were actually going for three point shooting ability, you'd have a guy like uh, Dante DiVincenzo over there over Jalen mm. Brunson, or Isaiah Although Brunson Joe. was very close to making the cut, uh, but other sharpshooters, Isaiah Joe. So, why are we inviting Malik Beasley? And, be, and, be and I also I also didn't know they they apparently we missed out on the fact that they reformatted it to a a deep two contest. Oh, oh yeah. cat! Because, <laughs> oh, Dude. there's another con. Carl Anthony Towns. He got two last names and two cons to him. <laughs> um, I would say uh, to to the Malik Beasley point, like not to no disrespect, but if they had said like. Seth Curry instead of Malik Beasley, I wouldn't have batted it out. I would. I, I don't give a damn what he's shooting from the field. That's a that's a Curry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, get out of here, Malik. They don't should do me. a three point contest with the worst shooters in the league. They should. Mm. Um, that would like, that would imagine, genuinely imagine be more watchable. Imagine Andre Drummond going up against. No, like, just respect Andre Drummond. He is nowhere near the worst three point shooter in the league. Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons. Put, yeah, because there's guys who you see film of and date, like for example, Mitchell Robinson does like sham gods in LA fitness <laughs> like pulling from like 30. So like there's guys that like, they just don't get the green light, but there's other dudes who just can't shoot. I that guess was, like, a it would be, like a it would be, it would be hard to find the six dudes who can't shoot the ball, I guess. Like yeah. at this day and age, you have to be able to shoot in the NBA. This isn't 2016, like 16. That would have went crazy. Yeah. Like, like Chuck Andre Joakim versus... Noah out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 34 year old Joakim <laughs> Noah. <laughs> Give me Joakim yeah. Noah, Andre Roberson, Andre Drummond, and, uh, Shit. Draymond <laughs> Green and Kevin Hart. Put, put like Steph Curry happens. with his hand tied behind his back and only his left <laughs> hand being able to use like some crazy, something like de -hum like humiliating to the other guy. <laughs> like, yeah. like just something funny. Like who cares? Yeah, uh, <laughs> Phil Jackson era Joakim Noah would have won that contest oh. for sure. <laughs> um, uh, all right, last thing for the the Saturday night aside from the dunk contest, mm. Steph versus Sabrina was great, but Kenny Smith needs to learn when to stop arguing with Reggie Miller. Um, they were like arguing the entire time while they were shooting <laughs> instead of actually commentating what was going on. That's cool. Uh, dunk contest. Oh, we man. complain as viewers about the judges every single year. Um, they've <laughs> taken out guys like Dwayne Wade, but they still give Dominique Wilkins a spot every year. I haven't seen a year where he wasn't there. And we say the judges are off for every time. So what are we doing? I I, think we, uh, why are they point, all like 60 plus a follow-up point i hate to say this i mean shout out to the I'm, I'm i'll be honest i did not know who this man was before um so all the respect to you but why was darnell a judge did you see the scores he was giving that's the first time uh dunk contest champion yeah he mac was... mcclung's mac mcclung's catch an air i'm pretty sure he gave it a 46 yeah that's, yeah 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 yet everybody gave him a 49 or 48 and he gave him a 46 he thought somebody jumping over somebody, throwing the ball to himself, catching it, dunking it, was two points less than Jalen Brown's windmill or whatever he did. Wait, wait, you're talking about the Dominique Wilkins tribute one that he did? Yeah. Uh, his first dunk? Yeah, no, that, that, bro, I don't, I don't understand. I still, like, to the, for the life of me, I don't understand the scores or at least the scores that they gave Jalen Brown. Because I, I know Jacob. exactly Jacob what he was through. trying to do. Jacob, Jacob should have went, went through. And that's my yeah. next point. Yeah. I thought Jacob Toppin not making it over Jalen Brown to the finals was like one of the worst robberies ever. Because um, he was nice. Judges, 
the judges were by far the worst they've ever been. It, they were um, biased. Yeah. Mac you know McClung. what I think it was? I have a theory that the NBA pushed for them to get Jalen Brown through because they want to convince Oh, I have a theory starts. about Jalen Brown himself trying to push himself through, um, which I'll explain. Mm. Uh, but Mac McClung only getting 50s on his last dunk was awful. That wasn't even his best dunk of the night. Literally. Um, now, starting with Jalen Brown, uh, TV viewers completely missed. I don't know if you guys, like, we're on TNT or whatever it was. We completely missed Jalen Brown's first dunk due to the yeah, no, 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 no. yeah. I, I <laughs> they brought out yeah. the fake Dominique with the high top fade, and I was like, "What is going on?" <laughs> and they just panned to like a Dominique. Uh, it was like a mural on the LED court, and we didn't even see the dunk. <laughs> <laughs> we heard it though. <laughs> yeah, we heard it. I, all I heard is, "Oh." I'm like, "What did he? Did he tear his Achilles? Like what? Like what the hell?" And then they, they show us the. Zizi just cut out. Um, oh, he's back. <laughs> oh, you're, Jalen you're... Brown trying to take you out. <laughs> your mic, your mic is on. A... I think you gotta p- plug your mic back in or something. Yeah. Anyway, hoop. Let's just continue. Yeah. Um, not to mention the Dominique fake guy wasn't even a part of the dunk. He was just out there to like dap. What him was up. he there? What I know. That? I know what he was there for. Because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna run through the Jalen Brown dunks. All right. I don't know exactly what order. So that happened. Then the next one, I want to be very careful about, but I just want to express my opinion. Uh, I don't want to do this in a joking manner. Jalen Brown doing the tribute to um, Clark, Ter- Terrence, Terrence Clark, Clark yep. um, was a nice gesture, but right. I thought it was inappropriate in the dunk contest setting because now mm-hmm. you're bringing in feelings to the judges. Right. And if even if your dunk is not good, how are you going to put it in their hands to give you a bad grade for someone that had died yeah Um, i thought the nba was crazy for putting his face in the paint yeah uh the dead guy um he got pity points for it it wasn't a great dunk Mm -hmm. i don't want to joke to say like oh he did a bad dunk for his friend but like i mean the dunk wasn't that great um i thought it was just even if it was something that was like he was doing in good motives not to just get cheat points um i thought it was completely inappropriate i don't know how anyone didn't tell him not to do it Mm. um Jalen Brown's next dunk, uh, I think it was his next dunk, over a, I don't know, a five foot five man sitting down was extremely elementary. Um, he completely missed out on the covering his eyes portion, looked dumb, somehow got a higher score than Jacob Toppin doing a 360 reverse through his legs, um, which was terrible. And Jalen Brown's last dunk with the left hand, which was nothing special. Uh, I just have seen this pattern of him first using Dominique, who's a judge. Uh, to potentially get favor from the judges mm. since he's using Dominique as like a prop. Uh, the next one with his dead friend, mm. the next one with his left hand. Mm. I just, uh, with Kai Sinat, like the guy who they're trying to push all all-star weekend. I just thought it was extremely forced. Um, and I was upset. I don't know if it was Brown's decision to do all that, but it just was way too like Propaganda. catered to, yeah. to get good grades with what yeah. the extra stuff he was doing. Um, no hate to Jalen Brown. I actually really like him, but I thought that was a huge con of the weekend. And that was it. That's an interesting point. I never thought of it like that. I'll be honest. I, um, yeah. Every single one of his dunks had to do with like a, an external, an outside factor. Yeah, like a third party gimmick that has nothing to do with the actual dunk, but it makes the actual dunk look different, even though it isn't. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's fair. I honestly, I yeah, I don't know if that's an, an NBA scripting problem. I don't know if that's just uh, him trying to. Win the dunk contest, whatever it is. I was not a fan. Was he I thought somebody. I'm oh, sorry. Z. No, I was just gonna say, can y'all hear me? Because yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Keep going. <laughs> Sadie, you gonna say something? Uh, I, I, I saw this thing that was really interesting to me that the NBA was just trying to push Jalen Brown because they want to convince more superstars to come and to do the dunk contest. Um, but yours. I mean, he is the highest paid sense. man in the NBA. You yours way, makes way more sense. Uh, um, did y'all see what Stephen A. said about LeBron and how he ruined the dunk contest? <laughs> I did see that. You want to harp on that, bro? He's is he lying? Like, like, what like, he like, like, like he he said. Uh, hold on, hold on. I don't want to paraphrase it. I just want to pull up the quote because I actually saved it. But uh, he was on the money, bro. He basically was saying how LeBron when Le- when they asked LeBron to do it earlier on in his career and he said no to it right then he said that he purposefully lebron would purposefully in warm-ups 
give like, you know, dunk contests like performances or shows, right? With the dunks that he would do in layup lines. So he was like, he was purposely doing that, right? So other he was he was like, you basically, you know how LeBron is like as a as a mogul and everybody admires him in the league. So they're gonna follow suit of what he says, right? You know, if he doesn't want to put it on put his, you know, legacy or ego on the line, then he won't do it. Meanwhile, Jordan, Dominique, Kobe, like when you look back at the dunk contest from back in the day, Jordan did three of them. Dominique did five of them. Kobe won the, his first one and he was like 19. So like, you know, he was basically just alluding to the fact that LeBron had a power, had like a say so in some of the superstars not participating in the dunk contest because he won't do it. Like Ja Morant said, he won't do it for a milli. But nowadays, I feel like he might you know, change that. Like he might be like, either give me a milli or give me a couple rounds of ammunition and then we'll be straight, you know, and then they'll be vibing out. But outside of that, it's going to take a lot for Ja, for ja Morant to do a dunk contest, bro. I'm telling you, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. He might be right about that's, LeBron. That's interesting. Like that, that LeBron point. And I can see where he's coming from, where it's like, you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're influencing the next generation. And you're basically telling the next generation, you don't need to do the dunk contest. Cause every other, yeah, that's interesting. Jordan. Can Kobe. I, can I add on? I'll, I kind of zoned out for a bit, but I don't think you mentioned the whole like MJ Dominique thing. Um, I did. Oh, I just yeah. zoned out my fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you <just all> bad. <laughs> yeah. That was like one of his main points. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. That that is interesting. I didn't see him say that, so that's interesting to see. Oh, it says it right here. LeBron James, if y'all can't see it on YouTube, hold on, let me let me focus in. Hold on, let me focus in. Come on. Show me my precious king. Say say what it says for the Spotify guys. LeBron James is directly responsible for ruining the slam dunk contest. <laughs> Steven said it real frank. I, I can't if you can't it's all, it's all good. Yeah. Thank you for saying see you Stephen just see A's hairline. <laughs> front and center. But yeah, I mean, I, oh, I want to show y'all this. I saw this earlier on ESPN. It says the 73 win Warriors had an offensive rating of 113 and a half, which was first in the league in 2016. Nowadays, that would be tied for 21st in the league. Mm, disgusting. That's disgusting, ain't it? That's just nasty. What, what other cons you got? Who? Um, let me just find my place. All right, so we got over uh, Jalen Brown. Rivers. Almost. Um, we we got to talk about that, though. All right. So the Jaime Hawkes stuff, um, I thought he was like a lot of times they have they have some dunk contest participants who don't really go far and they're just kind of filler. Mm. Um, I thought Jaime did a good job and I don't think he was necessarily creative enough, which is why I didn't push through. Um, he was solid. I thought it was just funny, though. Uh, this was very cool when they did the it was like before one of his dunks. It's like, let's take a break for some Mexican Mexican heritage. Yeah for the NBA and they showed some former uh, Mexican players. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they have a whole led basketball court and they decided to use like a five by eight area in the paint, (laughs) like it was a projector on a wall (laughs) was hilarious to me. Not to mention, like, I know they did it for TV. So the, the, the TV frame could catch it. But like, if you're in the arena, you just see like a tiny little, like little TV sized, (laughs) <laughs> thing on the court i don't know i just thought the whole led court was completely pointless um so i was i was not a fan of that um yeah. also one of the biggest things with a dunk contest for me i already mentioned how i hate the, the 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 fan noise and just everything just the vibe felt off with the blue court um this is playing into the whole de- like death of the dunk contest but a reason why it was so awful is because players don't I mean, they still dress up crazy, but they don't like crowd the court courtside to hype up the dunkers afterwards, which to me really makes it um, like mm-hmm. if Mac McClung goes up and does a throw to himself catch dunk and he goes and, and gives chest bumps to Giannis and everyone's jumping around him. When I think of the 2016 dunk contest, yeah, I think of Zach Levine. I think of Aaron Gordon, but I think of Andrew Wiggins in that in silver that jacket, jacket. course, yeah. <laughs> and Draymond <laughs> Green in the yellow and just them with their phones out all going crazy. Like that's what the dunk contest is about. Yeah. And I did not see any of that. If I had to. It's, it's it was, weird though, because 2016, like that was just the t- a time to be alive. Everything about t- that, what you just, what you just said, that clip is playing in my head right now. Yeah. I'm thinking to myself. That was 2016 vibes. Everything. I mean, I'm thinking of Drake with the shaved head and, and the, the <laughs> little thing and the hotline bling shit, like all of that. Like, and Andrew Wiggins' ugly ass jacket, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yo, oh my god, he just unlocked the core memory of how ugly that shit was. Yo, that's crazy. 
Anyway, I see your point, though. I see your point completely about, like, if players were courtside, like, the vibe is, you know, you're feeling like, you know, they're coming to see the, – the fans are coming to see the best dunkers that the league is willing to showcase. If if I'm an NBA player and I'm not in a dunk contest, I'm going to be courtside, bro. Like, it's like we yeah. have 2K rec. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I want to be as close to this dunk as physically possible. Like – I don't. I don't know if they changed the rules on that or what, but it's there's no that way players aren't. Yeah, there's no way, right? Like they're they're just yeah. They they always got Giannis. I've I've noticed this. You you know they have like the new because NBA is partnered with like Google Pixel, like you know oh that. Yeah. So every year they put Giannis courtside in like a phone, a brand new Google Pixel without the case, and it's like the lightest <laughs> cut, like a light blue for everybody. Yeah, to see. yeah. <laughs> And just front and center, like him yeah. right behind the backboard. He's like, oh! <laughs> the brand you, new Google you look Pixel. at what he's on, he's just on like the contacts app or just like the home screen. He's <laughs> not even taking a video. Um, but yeah, I thought the fan noise was terrible. The player hype is bad. I also think that plays in a huge uh, factor in just the NBA moving forward and the entertainment value. Um, as cool as it is to have these, and this doesn't go for all because Giannis is hilarious. Uh, and beat is funny in certain situations, but in terms of like just the hype aspect, when you have Luca and Jokic out there, they're not going to act the same as these previous superstars when it comes to just the camaraderie of it hmm. and like just the hyping each other up. And you have this new league of stars. You got Anthony Edwards, Jason Tate. Where are they hyping up everyone? Right. Like I remember Harden and Russ sitting courtside because let's let's be honest. They're in Indianapolis. If you're not at All Star Weekend, you're not you're not going there. Mm. like you're really gonna you're gonna choose indianapolis over over mexico right. for a vacation right i see right. pictures of quentin grimes posted up in like the middle of the beach somewhere it's like he is not going to all-star <laughs> weekend right so like for the dudes that are there you got to bring the energy and just they haven't um sorry i, I gotta move on but i wanted to harp on that one mm-hmm. um now as far as the all-star game goes um the mvp in my opinion i think this would help Paul a lot. anthony towns should not go to the most effective player in winning the game. It should go to the most entertaining player, regardless mm. of the team, mm. um, in order to promote winning, like, instead of just having them, like, not care at all. Yeah. Um, I think you'd have a money bonus for, for the winner. But, like, these guys that are taking layups and spot-up threes, mm. like, for three quarters of the game, I think are just trying to get get up some base points so that if the opportunity comes, they could run and get the MVP. Mm. You get 10, 12 points and some threes and some layups, things bounce your way, and you get, you get a couple threes in a row, okay, now I'm in the conversation for MVP. But it's it's so much more fun to see them throw lobs off the glass, just all the stupid stuff, behind-the-back shots. Like, we didn't we didn't see any of that. Um, yeah. Tyrese Halberton was the closest thing, and I think he should have got MVP. That was so funny when uh, they booed Dame. Mm. <laughs> it should have been Tyrese Halliburton. I mean, bro, he started the game with the five straight threes, which was mm. freaking crazy. That was like that. I thought the game was going to be a lot better than it was because of that beginning, um, and then also that like elbow Jason Williams pass, and mm. um, I, I thought was Tyrese shoulder. was honestly entertaining to watch. He was one of like the few standouts to me. Um, and the fact that Dame got it, let me tell you guys something crazy. Did you know that Jalen Brown had 30 plus points? No, no. but it makes sense because I did see him go on like a little stretch. Jalen the, Brown had 31 as Shea had 31. Yeah, just like spot up threes. Just... just random play. I didn't even think he had that many shots to get 30. You know what I mean? Like if I look at, like I'll give you some random players. Um, Jalen Brown had 36. When did Jalen Brown score 36 points? That's crazy. It's all that filler stuff. They'd run back and forth like five, ten times, just getting layups, and every once in a while they'd pull from, from, what's what's the place Anthony Edwards called? Uh, yeah, Wakatu, w- yeah, Kanatu, no. or whatever. What was it? <laughs> Yucatan, <laughs> Yucatan, Yucatan. <laughs> Bro, I'm looking at the starting lineup for the East. Damn, L- listen to this. Listen to this. Now tell me. I want y'all to tell me. Take a guess as to who the outlier is. Right. Jason Tatum, 20 points, bro. Giannis, 23 and 7. Dame, 39 and 6. 11 threes. Halliburton, 32, 7 and 6. 11 of 15, 10 of 14. Bam. Three. Hey, he was Talk to me, bam. <laughs> this, this is the man that this was the replacement for if he didn't get hurt, he would have been the MVP of the league this year again. But this was the replacement for Joel Embiid. Three points. Talk to me. Talk to me. Shout out Bam Adebayo. 
Um, I, I only got like two left. Um, uh, Doc Rivers getting the head coaching nod after being teammates with Doris Burke for three months <laughs> was hilarious. <laughs> um, and lastly, I was a little upset. Because, I mean, the weekend was awful in itself. But Anthony Edwards not standing on business by shooting everything with his left hand, I thought was mm. weak. Yeah. It's like, you already going to go out there and screw your team with the skills challenge and hit off the side of the backboard? Do it for the whole weekend, bro. Just make it a meme. He didn't stand on that. You know why? Because Shea started turning up. Mm. Mm, that's something they don't want to talk about. He, 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 he wanted an excuse. Mm. He wanted an excuse. That's what he wanted. But, but yeah. I'll lot. start. I'll start again. It, it irritates me because I don't know if it's just because I was a kid and I loved it much more as a kid. You know, it could be a nostalgia thing. But I hate All Star Weekend now. I don't even like take the time to really go out of my way to watch it. I'll watch it if I have nothing else to watch. Like I was genuinely, like, like some of that game. I had Family Guy on the other monitor. Talk to me. You know, what I'm I mean? getting hurt <laughs> by this. Like, like every year I have the expectation, like. You know, I'm going to carve out a nice little weekend for myself yeah. to sit down and just watch my, my favorite players growing up. You know, they're still around for now, even though they're in their mid-30s. It's like, just absorb it while I can. And it has disappointed so and, badly. So badly. And, you know, I've seen people comment stuff like, like, oh, they should do what the MLB used to do with the, you know, winning conference gets home court in the finals or whatever. And I'm like... No, bro. Like they need if if this was this was the first season, right, of the end season tournament. This was the first. This was the inaugural season. And in that time, within the first two weeks of the end season tournament this season, be honest. Like y'all didn't know if, if y'all turned on the TV, you couldn't tell if it was an end season tournament or a regular season game throughout the first like couple weeks of it. Then a couple more weeks go by, and then you can definitely tell what the difference is, right? Mm. With the All Star game, I'm sitting here like, yo. You mean to tell me that back when they was playing for money for an extra bonus earlier, like two, three months ago, they gave a hundred percent effort and it's the all-star game. I get it. I'm not even expecting a hundred percent 60, maybe 65, 70, something like that. Cause I keep seeing that Kobe Bryant, that Kobe Bryant clip resurface, God rest his soul, but of him talking about how there is no more competitiveness back in the day, you had that, you had guys that actually were clashing because they were like, we want to represent who the best conference is. For the Eastern Conference, I thought it was a dominant performance of, like, shooting, I guess. But then there's another part of me that's like, dude, they put up 168 threes. 168 threes. Yeah, he's right. And they made, I think, 64 of them or something like that. Less than 70. But 168 threes in an all-star game. I'm all for this new era shit. Yeah, praise Golden State and all that. Yeah, dynasty cool. But, dude, there is no reason that the game today should have 168 three-pointers being attempted in an all-star game. I'm no, not – I'm, you know, like, come it's on. It's disgusting. Now. It's disgusting. And, and to your point, Z, on paper, the West should have had the greatest team of all time. And they played, like, the worst team of all time. Like, Luka and Jokic were hilarious. I'll give them that. They but they did not care. Like, that was – I don't know. I feel like we're just circling around. I, I – Hoop, do you have any more cons? Because I, I get, I, honestly, I'm getting irritated talking about the All-Star. It's, it's getting. You know, that's kind of like, because I sat down after Saturday and Sunday were done just to get it fresh. And I'm sure there's a lot more I could come up with. But uh, you're right. I'm getting a little aggravated talking about it. Mm -hmm. All that to say, this, uh, I think this was the worst of all time. Like, I've, oh. I've ever been around for. Uh, and we were apparently not around for really good ones. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that was embarrassing. And I thought they couldn't get worse than last year's. Hopefully Adam Silver figures out a way to fix it. I think he has to realize now. I mean, the the reception on it was terrible. Um, everybody hates it. Adam Silver sees it. And he's a he's he's a he's a good commissioner. So I'm I'm hoping for something out of him. He should right. cook up. Uh but I think there's a good way to wrap up the episode. I don't know what you guys are feeling. If you guys have any other things you want to get off your chest. Um, oh, um the one other thing, it's a cool topic. Uh they were talking about it with the Steph Sabrina thing next year. If they oh, wanted okay. to do a partner for each, yeah. Do mm -hmm. you think it would be? First off, you got to tell me who the partners would be. But also, do you think it should be co-ed, where you do like Curry and then a WNBA and Sabrina and an NBA? Yeah, like that. Yeah, 
Because I think men versus women would get toxic, to be honest, yeah, with, yeah, with just yeah. the people. It would be Not like, them. It should be, be like, like Steph and Sabrina versus like Caitlin Clark and Dame or something. You yeah, know, give him Dame. Dame deserves yeah. it. Yeah. I was going to say, because outside of Dame. Or Isaiah or, Joe. Or Clay Thompson. Yeah, Malik Beasley. Clay Thompson. Yeah, <laughs> not, not, I don't know about Clay Thompson, but Isaiah Joe, that's the name to look out for. <laughs> um, anyway, this is a great way to wrap up the episode. Uh, fix All-Star Weekend for the love of God. Nobody wants to watch it. And uh, by the time we record our next episode, I'm sure games will have happened and some stuff will come up. Um, but yeah, thank you again for tuning in. And we hope wait, to see wait, you guys. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Before, before I, a joke just came in my head. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What? All right. What do you call the tag team of John Morant and Russell Westbrook? This is going to be so out of pocket. What? <laughs> Shoot bricks. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.